It's October the 9th, 2021, and you're listening to The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I'm Chris. We have Hello. Imar. We have Jeremiah. Talk about the past. Adrian. Well, the past, the present, and the future. There's a lot going on. Um, and uh, there is a future, I think. So we have a, we have a, both an historic aspect of something today and a future aspect um, of instant photography. Which, okay. So let's let, let me try to make a definition here. Um, <laughs> instant <laughs> photography for everyone who has been born, I don't know, in the last twenty five years, every all photography has been instant, pretty much, right? Mm. That's. Just uh, what we do. We have a box. We have a box with a little, uh, with a little display on it, and we press a button and we have a mm -hmm. photo. But for the longest time, that was not the case. When photography was invented, um, sometime in 1850s, it was a, pro a very, pretty tedious process, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Taking the foil. Well, first you had to kind of make your film and then e expose it for a long time, and then develop it and then fix it so that the image wouldn't fade away in the sun and um, and that was the case for the longest time and then there was uh, uh, Eastman Kodak who kind of made it uh, an every, every person's kind of thing a very common thing to take photos but it would still take days for you to get that back and uh, and, uh, and then came the year 1948 and uh, Edwin Herbert Land, he was uh, the inventor behind Polaroid, came up with the Polaroid, what we know as the Polaroid. And um, the legend has it that uh, his daughter asked him when he was out with her, he took some photos of her and she asked, why can't I have the photos? Why can't I see them right, mm. right away? That's the legend. And then he went to work and... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, 1948 started with uh, with what they called roll film back then, and uh, it it was a bit of a revolution, and it it moved pretty fast. Um, interesting enough, 1950 was the first ISO ISO 3000 film, which wow! If you shot film back then, the film was 50 ISO 50, 25, 50, maybe 100, and uh, he managed to build a very, very high, highly sensitive film very early. So um, I did not know that. That was mm. followed by color film in 1963, and then um, the one piece of the one piece of gear that a lot of us know is the SX70, which was the invention of the um, well, which coincided with the invention of uh, the integral film. Up to that point, film was called pack film, and it was peel apart. So you took a picture, um, and then you had to pull it out of the camera through a bunch of rollers that would squeeze the, the chemistry in between two sheets, and then you'd have to look at your watch and count down a minute or two, and then after that you could peel them apart, and you had one negative and one positive, pretty much. And um, they, Even the fancy cameras had timers on them. Very true. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. that changed in 1972 when the integral film, the, the film where everything was in one piece, um, was invented. And uh, that pretty much it took the photo. You didn't have to shake it. That was it's very, very popular in, in movies and things, but you don't shake a Polaroid. <laughs> um, People still do that today. It's amazing when you hand them a, an instant mm -hmm. photograph. It doesn't do anything. Do I have anything. to shake it? Do I have to shake it? It's like, no, don't shake it. I think, I think shaking it. Was, was probably a bit counterproductive, but it, or maybe it doesn't hurt too much. But that, that, was, that was the next revolution because that means that the timing was built into the film, right? You could just put the film somewhere in a, in a pocket and... It was mm. done when it was done, and you didn't have any any waste to throw away. Everything was like in one package, which was interesting. Um, here's an interesting connection that I didn't uh, know until I researched for this episode. Um, did you know that Ansel Adams was tightly connected with Polaroid? 
Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Just when I, was, Ansel, I didn't know before this, but Ansel Adams know. was a and Andy Warhol. Yeah, Ansel Adams was a corporate consultant mm. for Polaroid. He did a lot was of it? test series yeah. Um, yeah. for them. They sent him new films to test out, and he sent uh, very meticulous mm -hmm. notes back. Uh, and he did this from from 1948 to 1984, pretty long time. Mm -hmm. wow. And he's also the pretty one good. who suggested to Polaroid to create what they called the Artist Support Program, which means they they picked out a bunch of artists like Andy Warhol, Keith Haring, and and many more, mm -hmm. and just gave them film and cameras and told them to use them. And uh, brilliant, Ansel idea. Adams also. <laughs> Did you also get... You got one, did Jeremiah, you? Jeremiah, you were in the Artist Support Program. Tell us a bit about it. Mm -hmm. um, it was the first generation of the SX-70. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I had been working with Polaroid as a commercial photographer um, a lot. Um, one of my go-to cameras, uh, it, just in terms of test uh you know when you when you basically shot a test uh, exposure uh, was with the polaroid 190 uh which was an amazing had a schneider lens absolutely stunning quality and uh i actually i i still have those many of those images that i took with them that are as beautiful and they've been stored properly but they are as beautiful as they they were peeled apart. They have incredible tonal range. Um, and I remember the 3000 because that was gray on gray on gray on gray. There was no blacks. There was no white. It was, uh, but I had been working with them, of course, um, with a, a Polaroid black for a Polaroid back for my house of blood um, and used it a lot and would constantly be in communication with them and started to exhibit uh, also and exhibit off negatives that I would. Uh, developed from the Polaroid. In fact, on my uh, website, uh, you can see there is a, it's called 1905, it's a folio, and that was all shot with the Polaroid uh, 195. All those images are shot with a Polaroid 195. But in this kind of dynamic, when they introduced the um, SX-70, uh, I was one of the lucky recipients and, and a huge box of film, which of course the the razor blades to its razor, and and um, it was mind blowing. I, I remember the first shot that I took, probably of my hand or a window. Uh, you know, the exposures uh, you could control the aperture, which was also really really fun um, in terms of the inst insta. It didn't have a a kind of um, f stops, but it had like lighter, darker. Couldn't adjust the, sh the speed. But the sound was quite interesting, that kind of mechanical sound. Mm -hmm. um, what I did with the camera is it just coincided with some traveling that I was going to do. And I think I've mentioned this in, on our podcast uh, uh, at some point, that I was in Guatemala. I, I, I did a trip all through Central America, all through down through Panama. But I remember being uh, in Guatemala and spent some time there uh, around uh, Chichicastenango and um, Lake Atitlan. And what I did was I walked around Lake Atitlan, took me maybe a couple of days, just on foot, small path. And um, there were uh, a lot of communities of indigenous. Uh, and I photographed them. And um, I photographed them and I gave them their picture. We watched it develop. It was like a religious experience. It was astonishing. The it, more important than the actual image was the sharing of the dynamic of just experiencing the the, the kind of magical uh, appearance of the image of someone and and giving it to them. Um, and then, uh, you know, over the course of a few weeks, I revisited the community and they had sewn them to their clothes, many of them or made. And you've, and you've been uh, you've been raised to a deity it, 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 of sorts, right? <laughs> <laughs> sort of like those those uh, what do you call it? In the, in the, the crash planes, the cargo cult. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, 
but uh, and and those those pictures uh, they didn't really survive. They they did fade uh, those pictures. Uh, but the second um, batch of film that I got from them, uh, I did portraits of of uh, my artist friends and and whatnot. And I I still have s uh, many of them in my collection. I've digitized most of them uh, now, and they cracked and they're dried. Uh, they had, but they're still uh, color true. But the 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 brittleness of it, they have to be handled with, with a lot of care because they look like an old cracked painting. Um, and over the years, uh, you know, I just uh, became kind of a nice aficionado of Essex Symphony. And and um, without going on much too long, I was stupid. I don't have that archive with me where I am. But um, one of my uh, most favorite things that I did is I went to a twin convention. Yes, there was such a thing, hmm. a convention of twins. <laughs> and I photographed all the twins with my SX-70. <laughs> and they were all dressed the same. And, and I exhibited those. Uh, they're really, really fun. I do have those uh, digitized now. And they are, um, uh, sadly, I couldn't put them up on our so uh, that's that, that begs an interesting question right so so we've just been talking about the fun and the shared experience and stuff and i have to say i my photography certainly the images that i made or taken have never caused as much joy as when i've given the person the the instant film um yeah. it's, it is truly a joyous moment for everybody mm. um but you've just hinted that you've still got the images so how does that work <laughs> Well, I, I, I'm saying I, I did it as a when I shot the twins convention. I, I did it uh, using the camera as an aesthetic choice, ah, okay. ra r rather than a uh, um, a deity choice. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> because there's something um, really, really fundamentally beautiful about uh, Polaroid film, uh, how it exposes, what the tonal range is, the you can you can do some apps, especially if you start to use a, a little bit of filtration, which you can tape to the um, the SX70. Um, and I think there were some aftermarket um, advances in, in filtration. But uh, what I liked is the painterly quality, the fact that it was not so sharp, that it was um, the dyes were particular to the chemistry, and and it just created something. And it and uh, over the last uh, couple of years during the pandemic, I, I took it upon myself to dig a lot of that stuff out and um, and scan them at high resolution, put them up on Photoshop, not do a lot to them, maybe just slightly uh, In adjust some contrast. Interesting. You scan them and, and, and po Polaroids do have a very uh, three-dimensional quality to them in, in, in terms of their package. Right, yeah. the, the the whole thing is like a mil one two millimeters thick, and uh, and there's there's edges around Slightly the squeaky. frame, and and it does it does have mm. this whole package. It's not just the picture; it's the frame around the picture, the wide frame with the one side yeah. being wider than the other. Mm. Which so so if you if you throw them on the scanner, you will get a very specific cast of the shadow and mm. so on. So that that's right, uh, because the Polaroid, uh, the SX seventy Polaroid, in particular is um, as much an object as it is uh, the subject or a photograph. Uh, and, and I think that it's the interplay between the, the exactly. object yeah. as photograph and what you hold um, gives it a unique and it's one of one uh, so that um, there is something very, very special, unique about it. And um, I'm happy that Instax, which you're going to talk about, oh, I will. Uh, has, has, <laughs> has come back to the fold. <laughs> so let's let's continue with the history part of this. Um, so Polaroid in the 1990s, they got real well. It started to decline there because they had a lot of competition from the the one hour processing shops. Every corner, every street corner, almost had a had a one hour negative processing, so you could really get pictures almost instantly, but mm. much much cheaper. Um, there's, there were lots of single use cameras and then of course the camcorders and the digital things started to come on the market then. And then in 1991, Edwin Land died. And after this, um, it was a slow decline. They moved the production to over to China. 
And in 2001, Polaroid filed for bankruptcy and they stopped production in 2008. Was so that, that was the 2001. I didn't realize they yeah. went bankrupt in 2001. I thought it was more like 2006. No, 2001, but they, they, they just hang, hung on for a, a little longer. But then in 2008, they stopped production. So that's, that's kind of the history of Polaroid. And it will have a revival or it had a revival. But um, let's talk about the two other companies that are in that field. And um, the next one of note is Kodak. Of course, Kodak being the biggest photography-related company in the world. Um, interestingly enough, for the not first... Not anymore, surely. <laughs> well, not anymore, but they, they, were, they were huge, they were, really they huge were, yeah. in so many respects back then. Um, all, all the city of Rochester, I think over, over a third of the city of Rochester worked for Kodak and their 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 kids wow. work for Kodak and um, it was like the, the they company built, town they built mm. theaters they built uh, they built schools they built everything Kodak is everywhere in Rochester still today um, even though uh, not all of the buildings are are there anymore and Kodak is of course much much <laughs> smaller but interestingly enough in relation to Polaroid uh, Kodak produced Polaroid's film for the first twenty years so um, little Kodak, known fact. I they, didn't know that. No. Little known fact. I did yes. not know that. Did not know that. And uh, and then um, nineteen seventy six, um, Kodak introduced their own instant film because they wanted a piece of the cake, and uh, uh, that was when when Kodak and Polaroid kind of split paths, and uh, Edwin Land built a new imagine. plant for for this SX seventy film, pretty much. And uh, what followed was 10 years of uh, court fights over patents. And wow. in the end, uh, Polaroid won. Kodak had to pay $1 billion, billion with a B. Wow. And they had... That was a lot of money in 1976. <laughs> it was. And they had to remove all their instant products from the shelves overnight. Oh, that so. explains why I've never heard <clears throat> of Kodak instant products thing, because I hadn't. Wow. That's news to me as well. Which was, which was a huge deal back then, because... Customers were pretty much left out in the rain. They had no film mm -hmm. to buy for their cameras that they bought from Kodak maybe just a year before that. So it was a bit of a tough time for them. And that was the end of Kodak. Ten years of instant film. Um, and that was the end of that. And in the middle of that lawsuit, five years into that ten-year lawsuit, Fuji started to make instant film. And they struck a deal with Kodak to make instant film for Japan, which was a different market, and that was possible that way. And uh, they introduced pack film in 1981, uh, which was Polaroid compatible, and it came in 4x5. It came, be, came in the slightly smaller 3 and a quarter by 4 and a quarter inches. And um, that's the pack film that I kind of knew um, when I got into large format photography. We'll talk about those uses in, in a second. But um, Fuji then entered the North American market around 2003 because the patents had expired, so they could do that. And uh, they optimized this uh, pack film down to developments of, of uh, up to or down to 15 seconds, which was really fast. And uh, must have been proper, I don't know, proper contrasty and grainy, I would imagine, if it was developing that fast. I don't even know. I, I've, I've never tried the really fast ones. The ones I tried were the FP100 uh, variety. That, that's the one that hung on the longest. Um, and that was like a minute, maybe. And that was discontinued in 2016. That's five years ago. So you can still go on eBay and buy uh, packs of Fuji pack film um, for like $50 a pack. That's $5 a shot. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> it's really expensive. <laughs> and, uh, and then at the same time in 1999, Fuji built their own integral film, which was Instax, which is still around today. And uh, which actually is Fuji's biggest cash cow in the in the photography yeah. field. They I'm make, sure it must be. Yeah. They make ten times as much on film on on Instax than they make on their digital cameras. It's huge. It's big stuff. It I mean, you know, even big. just going back to the photography show I went to the other day, uh, the other week. Um, 
the Instax stands are enormous. They're as big as the Canon and Nikon stands. You know, they 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 have a real presence, and it's um, they're everywhere, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everywhere. It's um, in fact, uh, for if anybody that remembers that, I took a photo of the analog spotlight area, uh, uh, and we showed that on the screen. If anybody remembers that from a week or two ago, um, uh, I took that from climbing the little spiral staircase that was on the Fuji Instax stand. I had to climb up to the v- viewing platform at the top of the Fuji stand to take that photo. I mean, they, they, mm-hmm. the, the Instax stuff is is super big, and I tell you what, Fuji had two stands there. They have their Instax stand, and then they have their their digital bit. Um, but the digital bit, even with the medium format stuff and the the, the stuff that I shoot, the APS-C digital stuff, is still not as big as the yeah. overall Instax area. <laughs> Right. And mm-hmm. and Instax, they started with a little like credit card size mini and then they, they had the wide format. And in 2017, just four years ago, they made Instax Square, which looks remarkably like Polaroid from a, from a visual. R- r- there yeah, go. there we I'm go. My little photo album now for everybody that's listening to this on audio. I'll, I'll just sort of crinkle it a little bit by the microphone. <laughs> Um, but the, uh, the this is this is my photo album of, right. of uh, our last uh, decent length family holiday abroad, uh, which yeah, was a, a three week road trip through France, all around uh-huh. France. And I've got a photo album I shot pretty much exclusively Instax Square, and I've got a photo mm-hmm. album to prove it. It's lovely. Now, Very now good. Instax Square is slightly smaller than the Polaroid format, but it has the same. Well, it's square, and it is. It still has this wider edge on one side. It does come with different frame colors, um, but if you take the white, you could mistake it for a Polaroid, which um, actually triggered a lawsuit. Uh, Polaroid uh, tried to sue. Uh, Inst- or Fuji for for the Instax Square, they didn't succeed because <laughs> they can't expired. own a square. Can you paint right. a square? Also, I mean, it's like, well, it's like, like tri- I trigonometry. Here, isn't it? <laughs> right. it's, I want the hexagon. <laughs> it's the one wider <laughs> side that makes it look very similar to Polaroid, which is kind of oh. iconic. That look is very iconic. Still um, has that three three dimensional look. It's still a beautiful object. They yeah. are, yeah. I mean, I have a ton of them, um, and the minis as well, actually. Um, and, and even they are, um, they're, they're, they're difficult to see, perhaps, because they're a bit smaller, but they have their own use cases, and they certainly bring a lot of joy. And because they're credit card size, you can carry them in your wallet at all times. If, I have yeah, the so. Lomo Instax wide camera, which um, has an adjustable um, f-stop. and I mean, it's, it's a more c- controllable. Um, and I, I've gotten amazing results from it. I mean, just absolutely beautiful. I see. I, I've always thought about buying that camera because um, uh, I've always wanted an Instax wide camera because it is. Go big. for it. Treat so we'll, we'll, we'll get back to that in a second because uh, there's some interesting stuff happening. So Polaroid, Kodak, Fuji, that's the three. Fuji is the only one that is still on the market and they're actually doing quite well. Um, but Polaroid came back because after Polaroid went bankrupt um, and stopped production, um, there was the Impossible Project, which uh, was a bunch of uh, a bunch of um, fans who and and yeah. employees employees of Polaroid or ex employees of mm. Polaroid who bought the last Polaroid factory in Enschede in the Netherlands. Um, by the way, with financial help from Ilford, so everything kind of. <laughs> everything is together in some way um, mm. and uh, they brought those machines back to life they actually had to develop brand new chemistry because for for uh, EU reg- regulations there were some older stuff that was in the original Polaroids wasn't allowed anymore so yeah. they had to yeah. they had to Damn. start from scratch and they, they made a very experimental kind of thing in, initially very I guess very similar to what Polaroid did in the beginning and uh, the early the early black and white uh, impossible project film were fading and they had emulsion that wasn't very, very well, that had holes in it and that kind of stuff. And, quite uh, expensive they, too. And quite expensive too. Mm-hmm. And then they I, did. I, I, prob- I have four packs unused sitting in a, <laughs> <laughs> on my shelf. Well, of, one four, of, the, four, of one of the early batches. Uh, no, the se- probably the second batch. I probably yeah. bought new. Still the quite early old. Batches. That's still quite old by today's standards. They even yeah. they even yeah, sold ten years old maybe. They now. they yeah. even sold something called edge cut, which is um, like they have these big sheets that that are that are cut down into those small squares, um, and the stuff at the edge sometimes didn't 
wasn't fully coated with emulsion, mm -hmm. so you you had weird shapes at the end. And then they made this. Mm -hmm. They made a, they, they built a bit of a cult around it, which helped them finance the production and and getting everything going again. And they had black and white net sepia and that color, very similar to what uh, Polaroid did in the beginning. Their, their problem, mm -hmm. Chris, was uh, once they started to get rolling, and I, I used it for four by five because I thought, well, that'd be fun. And they had the peel apart negatives and all the rest. But the problem is uh, they could never get the price point to the point where it was really uh, usable. It, it was just so expensive, every sheet, that, that it became very impractical to get a, yes. quote, mediocre uh, image, uh, even fast, uh, off that. And, and if you were judging exposure, you could not do that accurately. With no, that, no, with no, not, not with that kind of film, uh, not, especially no. not with the experimental nature of the film. Uh, 2017, the former Impossible Project CIO bought the owner of the Polaroid brand, which was still around. We had a time of a decade where where some really weird Polaroid products came out on the digital side. Polaroid branded products. Polaroid mm -hmm. branded Alibaba products. Specials, most of them were with they, with so. some, some with Lady Gaga in in tow and oh yeah, I forgot about interest, that. Interest yeah. interesting combinations, mm -hmm. but the the owner of the Polaroid brand was bought by the Impossible Project CEO and that brought everything back together under the Polaroid brand and they're now selling this under the brand of Polaroid Originals, which is uh, a, a kind of a full circle kind of thing here. Um, so Polaroid is still around, uh, went through some mm. in interesting transformations and mm -hmm. uh, now you can get Polaroid again. Um, Jeremiah, you hinted at a use for instant photography as a tool, as a tool in studio photography, um, where I've I've seen it used, um, like the last bits of it, um, because uh, yeah, because I because I wasn't in, in photography back mm -hmm. then, but I've seen it as a, as a tool to to judge your exposure, to judge your composition. Um, on a medium format or on a large format camera and then you would have the instant preview and then you would switch out the back for your negatives and then have and then expose those uh, with the with the knowledge or with the, with the trust in your photo and then send those in for development yeah we would uh, we would use it um, again it was mainly I uh, used in fa when I did fashion um, unlike today, when you have uh, a fashion editor or uh, or an art director in the studio with you, for example, you're tethered to a computer. They're seeing what's going on, and uh, there's that interaction between the instant image that they see on right. the screen. Well, that wasn't the case when I mm -hmm. was shooting, and and uh, often the fashion editor just to you know we would we would play with the the dynamic of the of the outfit and the model and just get a sense of do we need a little more backlight to see a little more uh, light through the fabric or block it up or whatever it is you know quite subtle things uh, the polaroids were very 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 accurate uh, it, especially the black and white even if you were shooting color but you but you're judge. talking about the pack film not the not the sx70 film no, no, no. This is complete pack film. Uh, the SX-70 uh, for me was always uh, a playful, artistic, fun interaction, so socially uh, beneficial right. piece. This was a tool uh, that was very, very useful um, for exposure. Um, so in terms of, of kind of judgment, I, you know, you would use it. We would be shooting um, a transparency film. Um, so if I was shooting negative, I probably wouldn't have done that. But but because we were shooting transparency, especially for the magazines, because they like to separate uh, for publication off the transparency with much better quality. Um, and that that's really, that was the go-to. Well, there was, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, maybe a half a stop latitude on either side, which is quite narrow when you're playing around with very accurate lighting. And... So uh, we would use the Polaroid to really kind of uh, track down the middle. And once we had that, yes, you know, even a, a third of a stop adjustment would make a difference in the uh, value of the transparency. And then we could just kind of go, go you know, um, at uh, lightning speed using strobes or natural light or continuous light. 
uh, and be pretty self, uh, pretty assured because some of these shoots were, um, you know, we traveled, we have a big crew, we, you know, we'd be, they were expensive. You couldn't afford to screw up. So, um, that, that, that was the fundamental tool. I mean, there, and the same tool kind of tool was used for, uh, medical, a lot of medical stuff was used for that. Um, um, and, and, uh, you know, um, there was there was use for that to kind of look at cracks in engines and th things that required very very uh, kind of instant uh, feedback. Uh, of course, with digital, that's all gone. I find it interesting um, if you look back at when when instant photography was introduced in 1948. Of course, the gatekeepers, the established artists, were frowning upon, or, or it was frowned upon by them because. It was seen as a toy. It's not real photography, that kind of stuff. Um, and we've seen this numerous times. Um, and that transferring, uh, transforming this into an art form. Um, again, Polaroid did that with the help of Ansel Adams, and they created the Artist Support Program, and they created an arts collection uh, that Polaroid had, which is interesting. I've seen it as a tool in promotion back in the time when photos when an instant photo was still something interesting. Back in the 80s, I've seen like companies doing interesting, like Sega uh, advertising their their video game system with uh, photos with Sonic the Hedgehog somewhere that they handed to kids, that kind of stuff. Um, I've, I use it as a tool in teaching when I teach large format photography because mm -hmm. the instant feedback or the almost <laughs> instant feedback is, is a very right. interesting... Uh, important tool. Uh, I've seen uh, from the from the Stasi times in East Germany when they were searching uh, places secretly, planting I don't know bugs. They they would use Polaroid. They would import Polaroid for that to to take a photo so they could uh, rearrange everything exactly as they found it. Um, so right. the secret uh, services used that. Pornography is an interesting kind of use for Polaroid because you could you didn't have to give anyone the photo you could just <laughs> didn't no have to one be else online within would, an hour <laughs> no one would would uh would uh, would see what you what you photographed so that's an interesting side mm -hmm. use there oh, i'll say one thing for for the t the test shots that i did um which are interesting because the Polaroid back would only shoot, they would use the uh, four by six or whatever, whatever the format was in the pack film. Uh, it would just take the square, um, you know, and, and kind of everything else would be black. And they would, with that film, uh, there was a fixer. It, it was a kind of a smelly little, hmm. uh, you know, vertical thing that you just rubbed across it and it just coated the image. And if you did it carefully, there would be no bumps or dust or anything like that. Interestingly enough, uh, when I, this year when I was, uh, or last year when I was digitizing my collection, all of those pictures, they are, again, absolutely perfect. They, they are as fresh or beautiful as the day they were shot. Um, the, the, the quality of the fixer chemistry image, and uh, I guess, you know, they're properly stored, I say, um, you know, and, and when I digitized them, some of them, and I, I put them out there, people didn't know that they were a Polaroid print from, a, you know, the split negative Polaroid that I had digitized and put on. That's how, how hmm. sharp and accurate they were. So... Again, it helps to have the uh, planar lens, <laughs> <laughs> <So> <laughs> which would capture. Surely, it surely does. Yes. <laughs> so the the pack film or peel apart film is sadly pretty much gone. Um, yeah. I I miss that a lot, especially for. So what do you make your pornography with now, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Not telling. Um, <laughs> so eBay again has uh, there's there's packs of packs of Fuji uh, peel apart pack film uh, on there for like $50. Um, there was an experiment in between by a company called New 55. They actually built 4x5 peel apart film. I have those too. <clears throat> I still have a few sheets. It was yeah. a, a 
really expensive. <laughs> it's really, it's like ten bucks, ten bucks a sheet, as I mm. think. You know, Probably like, more for the even. big format. Yeah, for the, um, for the, there was uh, there was uh, an, an, a try in between by by a company called SuperSense who made um, the smaller, not the four by five, but three and a quarter by four and a quarter inch um, format, and they made film, but I don't think they are around anymore. Please, please correct me, anyone out there. Um, but it, but we still have instant film in the form of Instax. Instax, again, is the same principle as Polaroid was. It still is. So that is on the market. Polaroid is still in the market um, through the Impossible Project um, with uh, two different formats. So they have the smaller 1.8 inch format it's even smaller than instax mini but it um, i played with one of those the other day mm -hmm. actually I, I have a um, camera i have a camera and oh, you uh, have the camera do you? Yes, I, do. Right. I didn't have the camera but i play i played with one and uh yeah they're they're they're, they're delightful um the yeah the camera is is just basically a shrunken version of your classic you know uh polaroid camera and it spits out these tiny little square photos and uh, it's just it's a lot of fun they're cute I aren't mean, they <laughs> They're very cute, yeah. Are I, you ta I, you're talking about the Mini SX70? No, no, it's called it looks the, like? It no, looks no, like I'm a mini, mini SX70 format, yes. It looks exactly like that. Mm. And, and what's, it, what's this camera? It's called the Polaroid Go. It's not like an SX70. It's not a folding up one. It's more like the Polaroid, the, the oh, rainbow the, kind the of square one. one. Yeah, the square yeah, yeah, the big. This is what yeah. they look like. Yeah, great. I, like I mean, they're it. really I like tiny. It. They're here's yeah, my hand. I really like it. Uh, you know what? It, it, I look at that and I think, oh my God, what a great mosaic wall that would make. Mm. Yeah, yeah, could, not, yeah that's the be. first thing that I think of. Mm. It's like, not very oh, cheap, yeah. though. <laughs> no. no. So, but mosaics weren't cheap. <laughs> they are small. It's funny. It's almost like it's a race <laughs> to see who can make the, the smallest instant film. Because, yeah, I thought, I didn't think anybody was going to go smaller than Instax Mini, which is which is credit card size. I mean, for but Polaroid, the Polaroid Go is, is a square where the length of the square is the same as the short side of an Instax Mini. So it's, 1. Like, a, it's like a truncated inches. Instax Mini. <laughs> 1.8 inches. And, and uh, um, it's... It, but it has the same feel like a Polaroid. It's just tiny. There, it's a very. I think it's it's very good business. It's a good ratio of uh, size mm. versus. Oh, I have to shake it right now. I'm not shaking this. <laughs> um, so, so Instax and Polaroid are the two. Let's call them chemical um, products. They use chemistry. There's a there's a wet agent in there to to develop. Have the you film. got the camera there? Um, it's so small you can't see it, Emo. It really, it really is tiny. <laughs> Somewhere the marketing back there. of take, it, the, the, the take initial a photo marketing for the Polaroid Go. Hold on, hold on. Take a photo on. of it. Oh, go, go, go. Take it and yeah. like the, I don't know if you saw, Emo, the initial marketing for the Here Polaroid it Go. Uh, it was um, it was somebody wearing it on a chain around their neck, you know, in a sort of Flavor Flav oh, style. Oh, okay, it was yeah, just yeah. tiny. That Thank is a really cute camera. Mm. That is a cute yeah, camera. Yeah, the quality, uh, the, the build quality of the camera is amazing. Um, of course, it charges via USB. <laughs> of course. Hey, stop music. Mm. Oh, every single time. <laughs> um, the, the image quality, yeah, it's okay. It's, it's, you it's Polaroid. It. You, got, you got to use the bad, you know what I mean? Like slightly mm. defocus or... Uh, in uh, other words, actually, I... I uh, I felt that that when you embrace the flaws of of the SX70 film in particular, the original, um, in terms of like I always loved overexposing mm -hmm. it by a third to a half a stop, because the highlights would bloom somewhat and 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 spread across into the medium or the the co kind of full on shadows and it would it would create a and also breathing on the lens and then taking the picture and you know I, I, they would they would create the most painterly quality and i think and that's I, that's what i loved that's a sign of a true artist to to be able to embrace the shortcomings of a medium that's or even my, lean into them right yeah well exactly. that's that's um, what we do i mean it's what i do so um, we film, film. we do have a couple more um, physical instant formats um, on the market right now. One is a technology called Zinc, which doesn't have anything yeah. to do with the metal zinc, but it stands for zero ink, which is a project that uses heat to create color on small little credit card sized 
photos that are usually stickers, like you can peel them off and stick them somewhere, oh. which is interesting enough. I just found this out. A, Pol a Polaroid project started in the 90s. It's I a, never knew that. came from Polaroid. It was then spun out as an independent company in 2005. So Zinc came from Polaroid and it's in... Yeah. It's, in, in different, in, in all sorts of kind of cameras and printers, Polaroid, there are a few Polaroid branded zinc cameras that spit out the photo. It takes about a minute. It's not yeah, so good. I, I, I bought one, one terrible quality. The quality isn't that, isn't that <laughs> no, awesome, it's, it's no. Just, there's um, all kind of crinkling of the inks and it's just not a continuous tone. That's yeah, tone. it is a bit, a bit sandy looking. Um, <laughs> That's a good way to describe it. <laughs> and then there's a, a, another format, another technology called dye sublimation, and uh, and yeah, Canon. One of my favorites. Canon has has pretty much perfected that in their selfie printer line, which are small, smallish portable printers. There's a smaller version that's really portable now. And uh, it takes about a minute to print out, and then you have a yeah, they're, a they're really good. I mean, I have one of the kind of print. I have yeah, one of the good. ones that prints a six by four print. Uh, yeah, and, I have this too. Uh, I use it all the time. It's fantastic, um, and it's yeah. You can I think you can buy battery packs for them, although we don't. I just have a ba yeah, the battery pack is almost as expensive as the printer, so don't. Yeah. Um, um, but they're great, great for events and gatherings oh. because you know the mod, the modern ones, uh, because you can they, they you can print over Bluetooth or Air Print or whatever you like, basically. So you plug it in, so you know, and and let anybody just you know, print to it, and uh, it's a it's a cracking little thing. Right, um, we we use them on on photo workshops. Um, one of the workshops we do every year, well. Actually, we did it this year. Um, I sent an email out asking people, do you have a Canon selfie? If yes, bring it. I'll bring paper. And uh, I think in the good times, we had a, a table full of 10 of these printers for the workshop. So <laughs> nice. everyone could, and stacks of paper. So we ended up, um, everyone had to print at least 10 photos a day. And it was. Uh, it ended up with a big wall full of photos. So um Instant photography is alive and kicking. Alive and well. It yeah. is really, well. it's doing really well. Instax is doing really well. Polaroid, not as big as Instax, but um, still definitely getting their share. The zinc products are are out there. The dye sublimation folks. Even Leica has an Instax mini-based camera. They Indeed. make the Sofort camera, which is German for now. So... Um, it's basically it's, yes. a rebranded uh, camera. There's nothing really distinctive about it. It has the name Leica on it. That's um, it. So it's more money, but th th it's exactly the same as... Same as they do with Panasonic, where they said yeah. that the, the little Leica cameras are rebadged Panasonics, aren't they? Yeah. Right. So so that is pretty much the the history and the present of uh, instant photography. The future, I think we have we have the future set up for now. There is still, uh, I see a lot of um, I see a lot of interest in that type of photography still, especially from young people who oh yeah, yeah. who grew well, up Polaroid with Polaroid Week every every year. There's a Polaroid yep. Week, isn't there? Which is a a, a festival of, of of instant photography uh, run on Flickr. Yep. And so, yeah, that, that gets bigger and bigger every year. I've participated in that in the past and, you know, submitting images to Polaroid Week. It's great. And especially mm. the, the one of a kindness of these photos. I mean, you take a photo, you have a physical picture in your hand right away. It is, there's no copy of it. It is the only one that still has, or that has a newfound appeal among mm. a lot of people. So I don't see this going anywhere anytime soon be honest no no i don't know in fact people are launching new products so you know uh the the instax min the instax printers which you can print to wirelessly um i have the first generation instax mini one which is great again you can oh, is the one you, you can the keep... one you link to in the in the notes well that actually is a new one that's come out so it's under the future because it's not out yet Oh. Right. So, so this is the thing. This is the thing. It's just coming out that people have been asking for for years and years and years, and finally Fuji have, have gone ahead and done it. And it is a, a an Instax printer, so like the Square and the Mini ones, but it prints on the wide film. 
So this is the yeah this is the for Fuji this is large format printing in ter- in Instax terms, <laughs> um, but it'll be it'll be a little it'll be a little plastic box with a battery in it that you print to uh, wirelessly from a phone or a computer or if like me you happen to shoot Fuji digital cameras uh, it's built in, um, and so you know I I can shoot on my Fuji camera and uh, and I have a menu option on the camera just says print to Instax printer. And, I'm wondering uh, if if they're ever going to get bold enough to make a eight by ten. That'd be cool. It'd be really, that would be really. Cool. I sure hope so. I sure hope so. Well, if they can get the manufacturing cost down, mm. and it's obviously making money, so it, it really is um, very marketable. I mean, that uh, would be awesome. Oh, because yeah, even on our our phones and those kinds of things, they're small. And I think yeah. there is something nice about minimum eight by ten as a frameable piece for. So minutes. that takes us right into our picks of the week, and I'll start off with mine, which is a product that just came out, um, which is called the Lomo Graphlock Four by Five Instant Back. So what we're looking is Lomography have brought out this product. is It's an it's a back. A four by five back, which means it fits on all virtually all four by five large format cameras. They have the same geometry, so it attaches to uh, to the bunch of <laughs> large format cameras we have in the house here, um, and it takes Instax wide. So yeah, that's it, cool. That's really cool. It, so, it, it it's, it's not good. quite four by five, um, but <laughs> it is a large-ish type of format and it is affordable in relation to whatever else is on the market right now when we mm-hmm. talk about yeah. larger formats for uh putting on putting on the back of a large format camera um and if you it, wanted an entirely new setup uh that that would would use this um you can buy the from chroma cameras uh you can buy a four by five camera uh, <laughs> very that actually, true that, that mm-hmm. i know uh, i know um uh, fits this back because I was talking to yep. the, the owner of Chroma Cameras yeah, again at the photography show the other week, Steve Lloyd, great guy, and um, and he was saying, yeah, they, they absolutely, uh, their four by five camera will absolutely work. With oh yeah, that's, the international product, so. format is is really yeah, yeah. international, is very standardized, and so, uh, so so as long as you can find a lens from somewhere, you can buy a brand new four by five camera and a brand new instant back for it, and uh, yeah. yeah. You can still get business. used lenses. That's not too mm. hard. So, uh, so this is one thing. It's not cheap. It's 150 bucks. So, but but the but the individual shot of an Instax wide is under a dollar. So we're talking it's, it's, it's wild, comparably okay. affordable. And uh, mm. so for me, this is interesting because it means I can pick up uh, teaching four by five large format photography again, which I certainly want to do. So <laughs> nice. One of those mm. will make its way into our house for sure <laughs> um <laughs> all right next up is imar you brought us oh look at this this is excellent i, I i've never taken um an instant photo in my life which i was telling you all earlier um i grew up in the 80s in ireland and we didn't have a pot to pee in never mind polaroid cameras to play with so um, this might act, actually, I've always kind of wondered about the kind of um, sustainability kind of factor and, you know, how good is it for the environment, instant photography and all those prints and everything. I don't oh, know. bad. Maybe there's no. Uh, yeah. So uh, that that was another reason why I kind of never. But this little um, thing, look at this. I think you're all going to love it. It's called Jolly Look. I even like the name of it, but it's made from recycled cardboard or something. So, and it's an instant it camera. Started, oh, yeah, yeah, and it, it takes Instax film. It's, it's really, I really think If I remember rightly, they have a little <laughs> handle that you have to wind to crack yeah. the film out as well, because there's no battery yeah. power or anything so, in it. So it, yeah. it, it works like the Polaroids. It has a little bag of goo in it that gets squeezed in between the negative and the positive side, and in order to do this, you you crank it through a bunch of rollers to to spread this out uh, inside yeah. the pack, and uh, they they made they made a manual version, a manual hand cranked version of it, which uh, with a really nice little uh, 
camera around it with the bellows and everything. And the price wise, it's actually um, it's it's pretty good. So I could be tempted into this, mm. um, you know, in a, in an attempt to take my first instant photo. You can even just buy the development unit and build your own camera around it if you're at the yeah. DIY type. How about that? <laughs> I think my 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 friend Graham on the Sunny Six from the Sunny Sixteen podcast, he had one of the original ones, um, and I think what he did is he just basically cut a knife to it, um, and and, <laughs> and created took 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 the back uh -huh. end of it and created an instant mini back for for one of his medium format <laughs> cameras. There was a there was a lot of tape involved. The um, <laughs> the first the first version of it, I did I I did actually back it on Kickstarter. The first version of it was. Let's say quality wise, it was yeah. uh, lacking mm -hmm. a bit. Um, this is the I second one, which Graham is much, much it, better. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's um, why Graham. Did. In fact, actually, if I remember rightly, maybe he used it as a back, an instant back for a Lubatel. <laughs> <laughs> which, which did he put this online? I think I saw it somewhere online. So, oh, I'm sure he will have done. I can't remember what he's done with it, but um, but yeah, it, 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 there was a lot of a lot of cutting of cardboard involved and and, and a lot of tape involved. But he absolutely, it. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Very cool. Thanks, Imar. Um, mm -hmm. Adrian, you brought us Claire an Marie artist Bailey. this week. No toys from me this week. I brought you an artist mm -hmm. who I am very pleased to say is a friend of mine. Uh, this is Claire Marie Bailey, uh, who uh, is is an incredible um, instant film artist. Uh, particularly with Polaroid, um, she has uh, a lot of her art is is very much conceptual. Uh, she's very heavily influenced by uh, the cinema of of the sixties and seventies, uh, and uh, you know that that is um, you know, something that comes through in the aesthetic of her photography as well. I think uh, she she's uh, she's it's become very popular actually. Um, uh, yeah, with and she's she's had at least two shows across Europe in the last short while. She was in Barcelona a few weeks ago. I think she's in Italy this weekend somewhere, um, but uh, or, or maybe it's the other way around. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, she, she, yes, um, fantastic artwork. I encourage everybody to go and look at it. Excellent. I like it. And uh, last but not least, mm -hmm. Jeremiah, you brought us a product. Speaking of instant. <laughs> It's a printer. <laughs> yeah, this is basically the lowest level of, <laughs> of oh. quality you can get. Lean in, oh, lean gosh. in. I say, this, lean oh, yeah. in. This looks like this looks <laughs> like a like a printer that prints out your re your receipts at CVS. Same, yeah. but it does photos. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool! This a is thermal awesome. printer. Excellent. Memo that, 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 I think that's. Uh, I think that's awesome. I think and it has yeah, ears. It. <laughs> it has and, ears. And, and I'm going to say, <laughs> in terms of cost per image, very low. Wow. Yeah, I bet it is actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's fantastic. I tell you, 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 um, you, you'll struggle to get a lower, lower quality and resolution than one of those, I'm sure. Although, yeah. Do you know what it reminds me of? Actually, if, as, have any of you ever sent a photo to a Kindle just to see what that looks sure, like? Sure, it looks like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like that, which, uh, I, which is something that I enjoy. This. <laughs> just, just purely for giggles, the aesthetic of what, looking at photographs on a Kindle is quite fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh <is> my god <laughs> cases is sold separately very oh, cute it's with ears though cases with ears That's do you cool. have to buy their like paper hell, or do you put in paper from I, I actually think it's standard thermal paper if, whatever like, is till roll you know it looks like till, till roll you call of, it okay yeah till well roll. like that you would put in a yeah it is that's exactly yeah. what it is email it's till mm. roll yeah cool you could do some really you know with a with the whole roll of that. Yeah, you could do yeah. some really fun things. Yeah. I, I, I say this because I'm going to admit I, I have one, not this <laughs> not this particular brand, which I thought, oh, that's so cute. I, I, I have one that, that is just more basic, no frills. And uh, I experimented with it. I mean, it's it's like it, it cost pennies, right? Mm -hmm. But But to run images over a whole roll is kind of fun and you know, mm -hmm. and it's Bluetooth. It's, it's a ridiculous. You could print toy. the Bayer yeah, tapestry. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be fun? Yes, you yeah. can. Yeah. And then color it with felt tip pens. <laughs> and, you know, it'd be very good. It's not very authentic, though. I have mm. seen the Bayer tapestry. Uh, yeah. it does, I don't think they had felt tip pens. <laughs> very fun. So there's a lot of stuff in instant photography. I am very happy that uh, that this came together. Um, and thanks, uh, Jeremiah, for for the for the historic context. And uh, I'm I'm very happy to know someone who was in the actual artist uh, program at Polaroid. I still yeah. have that camera. You still oh, do. Wow. Okay. It's yeah, a I, I brown one. weather, very beautiful. I bought one in the 90s. So everyone, um, check us out online, <laughs> visit us and show us your SX-70s. Until next time, take care. Bye. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com.